The message was really that if we do not improve access to connectivity for all, we'll not be able to extend services, in particular healthcare services that are needed by our communities. And that li linked to that is the prices of uh, internet access for all. If we don't fight or drive down the, the cost of data, majority of the people will remain excluded in terms of having access to, to, to internet services, which has become the service provider to go to actually for people to access their basic services. And lastly is the issue of how do we use emerging technologies such as biometrics to make sure that we improve access to technologies, but also access to the basic services. For instance, if you use the example of healthcare, if we use artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence for good, how do we improve that access for people in Africa and the poor, majority of the who are poor, who cannot read and write sometimes, but with their biometrics, their data and their records can be kept with them. So the, let me start with the challenges. The challenges has been the connectivity. We don't have, we've got, like for instance, we've got universal internet penetration, but we do not have internet access. The first part is because majority of our population, which is poor, they do not have connection to their households. And, what, uh, and also the, that internet access and penetration is also determined by prices. South Africa's data prices are very high, so those are the challenges that we are faced with. But also the issue around digitization of our records. For instance, if you go to our home affairs, which is responsible for our um, records, the records are there in paper. So if you want to find out whose great-granddaughter I am, I, you'll have to do 10 years of digging and that will take forever, but instantly we cannot then prove the identity of a person. So that's the work that we're doing. But what are the opportunities? So the opportunities is that we are then driving connectivity of South Africa aggressively. As we talk today, our in, uh, communications regulator, ICASA, have just put service obligations for connectivity for the release of spectrum or licensing of spectrum to the mobile telecommunications operators, which will result in the connection of eight, over 18,000 schools, over 5,000 healthcare centers, including hospitals and clinics, over 8,000 traditional authority offices. Why is that important? Is because you're then driving connectivity to the home. As government, we are going to connect in the next, and this is over the next 36 months. In the next 36 months as government, we are going to connect uh, 21,000 um, government institutions that were not connected, which will, in 36 months, the whole of government will be connected, but also connect, uh, provide 33, over 33,000 community Wi-Fi hotspots so that the communities can have access to the internet. But we're also working, I'm sure, for those who follow the politics of South Africa, they've heard me saying we're looking at providing free basic data to the households, and I mentioned the gigabytes and the telcos were not happy. We want to see if we can provision uh, 10 gigabytes to the households. Why we want to do that is because we want to drive that. But when you do that, it's not about just connectivity for itself. It means that e-commerce will benefit. It means the SMMEs who are sitting out there can then participate in the economy. It means they, they can move their goods, they can move their products, they can get a whole lot of people in, that, in, in those products. But it can also mean for our poorer households, uh, they can have access to education. Because currently, we had to, the Minister of Education, and kudos to her, during the COVID-19 pandemic, she had to manage on a, what do you call it, on, on a shift basis of some sort, attendance of schooling, so that she could preserve education. But imagine if we were connected, kids would have been able to go to school virtually and, and not disrupting their lives. So but those are the things that are the opportunities that we can develop our countries. We pay a social grant in, in the country. The president in the State of the Nation address just extended the 350 rands that we pay to poorer people to alleviate the impact of COVID-19. But they have to go and queue in a post office to receive that. But if we had the connectivity, they will be able to get that money 
on, on their phones and then could go and redeem that coupon anywhere they choose to, whether they pay for it or withdraw the cash. So those are the opportunity that comes in. And for us, the opportunity to catapult South Africa into the digital economy is massive and we are looking at the next 36 months to make sure that South Africa is predominantly running a digital economy. The conversation is important for everyone because the, the issues around um, health, access to health, access to, to services, government services, access to connectivity, the prices of data, they are global in, in terms of the poor. And resolving the issues of poverty, I've made a statement in my speech, we don't believe that poverty is a permanent state. It's a situation that can be changed with correct and timeless interventions. And those timeless interventions will need global society to invest, multilateral institutions to invest, the global setting standard, uh, standard setting organizations to say what are the applicable standards or frameworks that must be there for all of us to be equal. Because you may not achieve equality, but you may achieve equity. And that needs all of us to participate together. The eradication of poverty is everybody's uh, problem because a poverty-driven or poverty-stricken society means an insecure society. And that insecurity is not only for South Africa or for Africa. At the end of the day, it will bite the Western or developed countries later. Mm -hmm.